Um, our uh, next uh, presenters will be uh, Ahmed uh, Farid and uh, Tariq Zulfiqar from, sorry, from uh, Environment Quality International, EQI. And uh, they will be um, talking mainly about a uh, vision for the Egyptian Museum in Tahrir Square. Ready? Is the presentation ready? Okay. I'm sorry. My colleague and I represent a private company. We've partnered with the Ministry of Antiquities in 2012 to, uh, to restore and rehabilitate the Egyptian Museum. That's for those of you who've been inside, and I presume that's most of you. Is, is very degraded and we wanted to see how this had, this had happened and what its original conditions were like and what we could do to improve it. So with the, with the, um, uh, the Foreign Office of the, of the Federal Republic of Germany, we, we got funding to undertake a study, a detailed study of the building from an architectural point of view. I have to say we didn't, um, we didn't delve too much into antiquities themselves because we're not Egyptologists and we weren't going to uh, address really, I mean, we weren't going to get into uh, archaeological restoration. However, the building itself is, uh, as a Beaux-Arts monument, is, is a national monument. It's protected by law now. And so the study that we did uh, allowed us to to get a clearer picture of what the museum was like originally and what we could do to, to restore it. So we saw, we, at, at the museum, they have the original plans that were drawn by Marcel Dournion, a French architect, who won the competition. It was an international competition that was uh, launched for the, for the construction of the museum. We were able to, to, to compare from these drawings, from these drawings, they're a bit faded now, but you can see some colors. We, we were able to see that the museum originally didn't look like what it is today. So we undertook some archae architectural surveys and we did some, some research work where we stripped some parts of the wall to see how many layers of paint had been added to the building. We, uh, we also stripped some of the floors to find out what the, uh, what the original was like and if we could restore it. So we, I will, I will show you some pictures of, uh, of what the halls we've worked in were like before and what they are now. But what we chose as a, as a pilot uh, area for intervention was the Tutankhamun Gallery because it has the, the most famous uh, pieces that's, that most of the visitors want to see when they come to, to the Egyptian Museum. So we, we thought that would be a good place to start and to show what we can do. I have to say here that uh, so far over the course of a year and a half we've, uh, we've managed to restore the seven hall of the eastern wing, the, the, the vertical strip on the right of the drawing. And this is now completed. And this year we're hoping to, uh, to the coming year we're, we're hoping to finish the, or to start working in and finish the northern gallery which is at the top of the drawing. The building itself has what you call skylights that, uh, that are like this. They're very degraded. They have, haven't been maintained over the, over the past century. The, the building was opened, was inaugurated in 1902, and since then there's been very little done except the addition of these bomb shelters in the late 60s that were added and that are threatening the integrity of the building. This is after our intervention. You can see that uh, we've uh, restored it entirely. One notable thing that should be mentioned here, you can see that the glass has been covered. That's to protect, actually it comes from a, a good intention, which is to protect the colored, the pigmented artifacts that are displayed in the halls beneath. And so we've used, we've used the filtered glass that filters out the damaging UV, uh, UV rays that, that, that can discolor the, 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 the colored, the pigmented monuments on display in the halls. 
Here you see the Tutankhamun gallery two years ago. You can see that the walls have been painted uh, in beige. Actually, we found that there had been eight, eight layers of paint that had been added since the 50s. And we, so as you saw in the previous uh, plans, we found that the colors are actually still still present and we were able to restore them and this is what the holes look like after our intervention so you can see a difference not only in the walls but also the floors that are made of a, a terrazzo mosaic an italian uh, an italian uh, technique that consists of a mix of mixing portland cement with um, with colored quartz and granite so this is what it looks like As we approach, uh, as we approach, so th these works are funded either by international donors or by private companies that we approach. As we approached some of our, some of these companies, we were often told that they weren't really interested in, in architectural restoration, in as much as uh, helping the community benefit from the museum. So we did. Uh, we designed a program for, for school children and for, for people from around the, from the downtown area. And uh, this project's true hero, Ahmed Farid, can tell you more about it. It'll be in Arabic. Sorry, I'm going to talk a little bit about something that was program that we had to do a relationship between the museum and the community in general, which is the building بالمتحف وحتى أكثر من كده إحنا تعملنا معاه على إن كل القاهرة بداية إحنا يعني عدنا نلف كده على على السكان اللي سكنين حوالين المتحف بكل مستوياتهم سواء العمارات الموجودة سواء مجموعة من الأهاوي موجودة حتى دخلنا شارع معروف تكلمنا مع المستويات بتاعت الورش وعن المدارس الحكومية والمدارس الأجنبية سواء إنترناشونال أو ناشونال فاكتشفنا الحقيقة إن في يعني انفصال تام عن المتحف وإن المتحف بيمثل كل المجموعات من السكان اللي اتكلمنا معهم دول إن هو مجرد مكان بيعرض أثار مصرية وتسعين في المية من حتى السكان قالوا إن هم ممكن يكونوا زروا من ثلاثين سنة ومن أربعين سنة كل مستويات الأهاوي اللي إحنا شفناه يعني مثلا لو مثلا قهوة وادي النيل أغلب اللي بيقعد عليها مش من سكان التحرير لكن بيبقى لهم علاقة بالمجمع أو جايين يخلصوا أشغال أو جاي يعمل بيزنس صغير جوه المدينة لو روحنا مثلا بعيدنا شوية على القهوة اللي عند استراند فيها سكان كتير من نص البلد بنقعد معاهم إذا كنا روحنا ستوريل في ناس برضو سكان يعني أغلب فريش كان كل كل العلاقة مع المتحف علاقة سلبية جدا تماما خدنا ناس كتيرة منهم ودخلناهم المتحف وكنا وحول حضراتكم مفاجأة كمان اكتشفناها إن جوا المتحف نفسه في إدارات كتيرة موجودة عشان تتعامل مع المجتمع المحيط وعملين برامج إلى حد ما جيدة وفيها شرح لمحتوى المتحف وزي يتعاملوا مع الناس بس زي ما قلت حضراتكم لا اللي جوه بيخش ولا اللي جوه عارف يتعامل مع اللي بره ف فعلنا كذا برنامج ان خدنا ناس كتير من السكان ومن الاهاوي وبقينا حتى نعرفوا على مدير المتحف ويتكلم معاهم عن اهميه المتحف خدنا كتير من المدارس من كذا نوعيه يعني خدنا مدارس انترناشونال خدنا مدارس اجنبيه بس بتدرس طبقا للقانون المصري خدنا مدارس حكومية و يعني اتعاملوا مع البرامج بتاعة المتحف هم عملوا لهم طلعوا انه كانوا عاملين عشر برامج بيعرضوا كل الانشطة بتاعة الانسان المصري جوه المتحف سواء اكل سواء مجوهرات سواء بنى بيوت الناس اكتشفوا انه جزء كبير جدا من حياتهم اليومية موجود في المتحف في طريقة الأكل في طريقة الطبخ في طريقة صناعة المجوهرات في ناس من اللي كانوا ليهم علاقة بالمناطق الريفية 
وكانوا اول مره يعرفوا ان البنى بالطوب الني مثلا دي صناعه مصريه قديمه موجوده من ست سبع تلاف سنه وان التفاصيل حتى بتاعت الصناعه المصريه في انا خدت ناس اللي هم بيعملوا الاقفاص بالجريد وريته الراجل كان سعيد جدا انه اكتشف ان صناعه الجريد دي حاجه موجوده بقى لها اكتر من 4000 سنه الحقيقه احنا كان البروجرام صغير ما كانش حاجه كبيره يعني ما كانش يتعدى شهر لكن يعني نتائجه احنا ما كناش متخيلين انها يعني شيقه جدا وان اكتشفنا ان حتى ان في مدارس كتيره اتصلت باداره المتحف وطلبت انها تستمر في في البرنامج دي واحنا على حاسس ان حاسين الحقيقه ان ده حاجه منطقيه ان المتحف المصري بتاريخه يبقى هو مركز تنويري في القاهره كلها يعني دي كده نبذه سريعه عن مجموعه من الانشطه الاجتماعيه اللي عملناها مع المتحف وكان زي ما بقول لحضراتكم من داخل المتحف للمجتمع المحيط او العكس من المجتمع المحيط مع اداره المتحف شكرا لك Um, so one of the other things that came out of our research, which may be common knowledge to some of you, but it wasn't for us, is that the, the museum, the land that extends to the west of the museum to the Nile, uh, once belonged to the museum and then it was occupied by military barracks and then Here you can see the evolution of Tahrir. And then eventually in the 50s, uh, the, the, uh, the headquarters of the Arab Socialist Union was built and converted later on to the National Democratic Party. And that was, that was burnt in 2011. And that was burnt in 2011, giving, giving rise to a sort of very bleak view of, of Tahrir. Uh, as you can see, this is... Uh, a car park that, that, that you were discussing earlier that's been finished since then, but when we started our research in 2011, it still looked like this. So between this and that, we, we elaborated the concept to, to re-establish the museum's link to the Nile, and the museum is overcrowded, so it clearly needs new facilities. Granted, there is the Grand Egyptian Museum and the Museum of Civilization in Fustat. There are new museums that the Ministry of Antiquities is building. But we also know that this museum will remain a museum and there's, there's no reason really that so many artifacts should be left crowding the basement and, uh, and left unseen. So our concept was to, uh, to extend westward since and re-establish the connection to the Nile because during the construction we know that uh, some of the construction I mean th construction materials and then monuments were brought via the Nile to the Egyptian Museum so we 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 drew a concept that uh, was presented by the Minister of of antiquities to the Council of Ministers and as far as we know so far this this concept has been is favored by the Council of Ministries. Of course, things have been changing a lot recently, so we don't know what will happen really in the end. But we've seen the demolition now of the former National Democratic Party building. For us, we see it as a good thing. I know that maybe some, some among you may see that as, as a terrible thing. Uh, I'm not going to debate that. I mean, this is what's happening now is that it's being demolished and, and various ministries or maybe perhaps companies are debating what to do with the land. There's, uh, these facilities include a, 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 a garden, a, a garden, a botanical garden. We know that the existing garden south of the museum only has two endemic plant species out of maybe 32 that are, that are growing now in the museum. So we'd like to have a, a botanical garden of Egyptian species. And the new facilities that are in orange here include temporary exhibition halls, shops, and uh, some restaurants, as well as an event hall, a lecture hall. And there's one thing that Tare asked me to, uh, to discuss. In 2012, when we initially presented this, uh, this concept to, 
to the Ministry of Antiquities, we had we had devised and we had designed, sort of conceptualized a garden extending southwards to Tahrir. This uh, this this concept was dropped later on in, in these in these drawings that are much more recent for us because. As you know now, the, the garden that you were discussing above the car park has been completed by the Cairo governorate. And that's it. Thank you very much, Tara. Thank you very much, Ahmed.